This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So it's not a bad monkey, but this came out exactly the same time as the bad monkey 2004 and has some of the same key features. Now this is modeled after a blues driver BD2. I think that's the basis of the circuit. Key difference is instead of just the tone knob, you've got a low and a high and another key difference, there's a mixer out, which has what they call cabinet compensation on it. Uh, the only other thing I can think of that does this, there are probably other examples, let me know in the comments, but Strymon have this cab compensation on a couple of their pedals, I think maybe the Timeline, maybe the Big Sky. Um, the idea being that you can plug straight out of this into the mixer or into uh, front of house or into recording, whatever, and have a sound that doesn't sound too bad at all. That's what I was using in the intro there. I think it's maybe uh, a bit of a an idea that could be explored a bit more. Maybe drive pedals that are able to load IRs could be a thing, um, or maybe using drive pedals with something like the HX Stomp, which could just load your IRs for you. Um, using drive pedals in this way, I think could potentially get some okay sounds out of it. Um, it can in some cases be easier to, to dial these things in um, as well. You know, not as tweakable as an actual amp model, and probably doesn't have some of the characteristics that you get with like a normal Helix model with like sag and some of the compression aspects, things that change over time, non-linearities or whatever, but can do a, a job in a pinch. Uh, I don't think this is gonna make you wanna go out and grab a Screamin' Blues just yet until Josh has demoed his, but um, the key thing about a Blues driver is that in between the two clipping uh, parts of the circuit, there is a Fender Tone Stack modeled. Um, I think it's modeled with something like the bass up full or, or something a little bit weird, but there is a Fender Tone Stack somewhere hidden in that, which I think is why this gave me the idea like, well, that could do a job of like an amp model if you paired that with 
you know, a multi-effects or something. Maybe let me know if that's a, a dumb idea or not. 50 quid, not not 650, so that's a plus. Oh, since Truefire sponsored the channel, I got a question uh, earlier in the week about what stuff I might recommend on Truefire for someone who wants to play like me, uh, whatever that means. So what I'm gonna do is tell you some of the stuff that I really like on there and some of the stuff which I think has some influences similar to mine. So I kind of practice jazz quite a lot behind the scenes. So I think the, the best person on there for that might be Tim Lurch or Martin Taylor. Uh, Martin Taylor actually has a course relatively recent where he goes through and talks about how he puts together arrangements. I think that's a really helpful one for getting behind the scenes uh, into, you know, how people get from, you know, a piece of music on paper or on the ear to these rather sort of complex arrangements, jazz arrangements and stuff. So that would be a recommendation. Tim Miller, uh, I think, is a huge fan of Alan Holdsworth, and I am too. He's got a creative arpeggio design course, and I think that kind of, I like to think somewhat in that way, in terms of taking a, a shape or a concept on guitar and moving it around the neck and letting kind of the guitar do some of the work uh, instead of always necessarily thinking about things super analytically, instead sort of seeing what the shapes can bring out of the music for you I think creative arpeggio design is a really good one for that. Andy Wood and Andy Timmons have some courses on there. Now, I think Andy Wood has some of the same influences as me, John Petrucci, uh, Eric Johnson, these kind of guys. So I think him and Andy Timmons as well, I think was quite inspired by Eric Johnson. And he has some courses on there that I think are really useful and can give you some key insight into how he's thinking about stuff as well as his gear and tones and all that sort of stuff. So those would be some of the things that I've enjoyed on there. I need to spend some more time watching them. But if you were looking for stuff that I personally think would be the sort of stuff that I would have appreciated when I was a kid, I think those would be the things. Um, and I think those guys somewhat have some similar influences to me. Um, there's not a ton of stuff on specifically Legato on there, which I think maybe might be something that you would also want to pay some attention to but yeah some true fire stuff there there's a jnc 40 code that you could use if you want to get 40 percent off of any of their courses or you can use the link below to grab their all access membership where you can you know just pay a yearly subscription and then get access to all of those things which i think represents pretty good value if you use that link they know that you came from this video so that'd be helpful on with the video now what's interesting about boss blues driver is that within the clipping circuit, in between the two clipping sections, there's actually a simulation uh, in circuit form of a Fender tone stack. Now, what this, in theory, sort of means is that a Bloss Blues driver is like a Fender in a box type pedal. Um, Andy Timmons uses one. Uh, I have one over there. I think it's a really cool sound pedal. So what I've done is I've just put this in the loop of my HX Stomp, uh, so the send goes into here, the return goes back into the HX Stomp. In front of the HX Stomp, I've got a compressor and a couple of drive options. And after the uh, blues, I've got essentially just a, a little delay. Um, so you get this kind of thing. So this is just the pedal into the delay. <laughs> Let's just have an experiment with this. We'll start off with the tone stack. So essentially this has got, on output two, it's called cabinet compensation. Uh, if we put it in here, you should hear that it's quite a lot more top end. Stuff clipping on the edge. Um, which is not actual clipping, it's just the sound of like a digital high-end. Not digital. It's not digital, is it? It's an analog pedal, but you get what I mean. Like it's got that kind of brittle stuff, which is not on here. So probably it's like an EQ on this output of some form, I assume. Okay, um, so what we could do is a 
feel pretty good. It's kind of a, giving me a bit of a, a reminder that you can sort of use drive pedals with IRs and get some pretty good results. Um, I think people going direct to board in the past, like prints and stuff, might have experimented with this sort of thing too. <laughs> Okay, so let's just up the gain a bit. Quite a lot of compression built into it anyway. So it's got quite a good range of kind of tone. Um, the other thing is that it can sort of take pedals, interestingly. So here we've got a compressor, compressor in front. For instance, you could put something like a Timmy in front of it. So this is a digital Timmy. And stacking in front of that a valve driver. So what I'm thinking is that could definitely get you out of uh, a, a pinch. Uh, say, for instance, your amp had gone down and you were on a gig and you thought, I am now screwed. You could stick this, I think, straight to desk and put your board in front of it and you could get some okay tones, I feel like. <laughs> It's like, it's okay sounding, right? Compressor in front. You know, 
it's not giving me sort of nasty surprises, I guess. <laughs> And again, just chucking the Timmy in front as well. It's not bad at all, is it? I'm not sure that it's the most sort of 3D, uh, realistic maybe feeling or sounding thing, but I think in a pinch that could do a job. Uh, alongside, presumably, it works perfectly functionally as a normal pedal, but I think that might be a good little thing to have in the back pocket um, in case your amp blows up, I guess. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you used one of these, if you've got an alternative. I think the, the Bad Monkey could be used like this too, but. It, the Troop Screamer design doesn't have, as far as I'm aware, an actual Fender tone stack sort of simulated in there. So that is maybe what this could be a bit of a sleeper pedal for, I guess. I don't know. Let's wait till Josh gets his hands on one. Cheers, then.